Hey team, welcome back to the channel. It's almost midnight right now and today was a content day for me, which means I have been creating content all day. Right now I am tired and sleepy, but I wanted to share this story with you guys before I call it a day. Getting pool in Nigeria right now, especially in places like Lagos, is crazy. It's F hop. If you are like me, who is single and searching with pure intentions, I'm sending you love, I'm sending you kisses, I'm sending you hugs. Please be careful out there because the pool is filled with users. People who want to use people and nothing else. So I met this guy through a mutual friend. His name is Tunde. This guy lives in Ondo State. There's a place called Ondo Town. In all those states so that's where he lives and uh, you guys know i live in lagos so the distance was a kind of a problem for me i have never been in a long distance relationship before and i don't think it's something that i wanted but i was open-minded i just thought you know things will fall where yeah, they may if you are single and you are searching and you have good intentions you have to be very careful i'm not joking you have to pay attention to every single thing. You can't afford to be naive and be attentive. Pay attention, especially when you are, maybe you are in a talking stage with somebody. You have to pay attention to all of the details. Read the signs. Do not excuse anything. Do not give, do not make excuses for anybody. Mm. To be very honest, I'm going to put this out there. I have been in, in a few relationships before now and none of those relationships benefited me financially. Honestly speaking, I don't want to be, I want to try the other way around. I want to be in a relationship where I'm gaining financially. I want to be in a relationship where if I have two, two Nera problem, my mom will be able to give me one Nera or even put two Kobo. But that is not the goal. That is not my goal. My goal is to find someone, a good person, that you know, we can build something good together. That is not to say that money will not be involved. But money is not the cook. And this Tunde guy, we were just talking. We are in the talking stage. We, we, we are not dating yet. So one day he messaged me and was like, have you eaten? I'm like, no, I'm hungry. I'm seriously hungry. And I want, I'm craving junks, but I am broke. I cannot buy junks. And this is not like the first time that, you know, I've told him something like that, that he eventually did not do anything about it. But that particular day, he now said, okay, what do we do about it? Do you want to buy Jumia? Do you want to order food from Jumia Food? I said, yes. You know, open that. He was going to say, the next thing he was going to say is send your account number. Let me send you something so that you can maybe even add up to, add to whatever you have and order what you want or something. I mean, if you are not going to give somebody money, why would you ask them, what, what are we going to do about it? And then again, why, and I told you that I was broke. I told him that I was broke, that I don't have money. How can you tell somebody that told you that she's broke to order Jumia when you know you do not have any intentions of sending the person's money? This boy went offline for four hours. By the time he got back, it was late, I think around nine. He said, uh, have you ordered the, how ah, about the junk? How oh, far about the junk? And I said, are you going to send me money to order it or not? He said, no, not today. And I said, when? Open will say, okay, tomorrow morning or tomorrow. He now said, he does not know. Let him not promise. I was very hungry because it did not make any sense to me. Even if you don't have money, you could have said, okay, take 1,000 or take 2,000 naira and add up, put, add money to it and buy what you want to buy. He works in Ondotan in the bank. So they gave him off. I think he said he had, a, it was he 14 days off. I'm not sure how many days off. And before the off, he told me that he was going to have off, some days off work and he would like to come to Lagos for us to see. And I said, it's a good idea. I would told him that, if we see and we vibe, we vibe. If we do not vibe, we do not vibe. He said, no problem. Let's see. I said, okay. However, you will have to stay in an hotel. 
I asked him, how long are you going to stay? He said, you can stay for three, four, five days. I said, no problem. You can stay for a week if you want to stay, but you will have to get an hotel. This is when the red flag started showing. The first thing he said, the first day I mentioned hotel, was that he said, you know what? Instead of us to do hotel, because if he's going to stay in hotel, he's going to spend money. And uh, instead of hotel, he can just come in the morning and then we can hang out somewhere. And then we can talk. And then he can go back in the evening. And I said, how is that going to be possible? You are coming from all the way from Ondo town. And I, I, from, his, from the conversation that we had, I understand that he is going to take a bus from Ondo town to Ore. I think he said it's a bus and hour drive. And then from Ore, he's going to take a bus to Lagos. With traffic and everything, he might not get here till around two, three in the afternoon. So what time are we going to stay and talk? And then you will not begin to go back because you don't want to pay for hotel money. When he now said he doesn't have to sleep, we can just come hang out somewhere. He can just come hang out somewhere and we can talk. And then he will go back. I was like, Mogbe, Mogbe. <laughs> But that was the first time he said, he, he, you know, he mentioned that he was going to come and then I mentioned the test. Then we started talking, we still kept talking and everything. I kept insisting that he will have to stay in an hotel. Because first of all, I've never met this person. And from our conversation so far, he's giving me upside. But I was genuinely open-minded and I wanted to see where, you know, it will lead. While he was coming, while he was on his way, I called my friend and said, that boy is coming in. Do you know the boy very, very well? My friend said, yes. He knows today's house. He knows today's father's house. He knows the mother. He knows the sister. He knows the family member. Tunde is a nice person. He's a ghetto person. does not have problem. Blah, 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 blah. That I said, okay. I went to him to look for a hotel. If he comes, he go and stay in the hotel. So I told my friend. My friend was like, there's no point going to stay in a hotel. I can leave him to sleep in my house. I was skeptical, but my friend talked me to it. And my friend was like, don't worry, let him stay. I said, okay. He came, I think, around five or there back. I did not cook that day. I did not have food in my freezer that day. There was no food in the house that day. And I asked him, are you hungry? He said, no, it's fine. Are you serious? He said, yes. He was calm, you know. He did not bring anything. Not even bread or 500 naira. This boy came empty and dead meanwhile when he when he when he was coming part of the plan that he, me and him had was that when he comes we are going to go out like have like a date maybe go to like fancy restaurants to eat or maybe go to i would suggested landmark beach he was like oh cool 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 and i said okay when you come we can use one day to just go out explore lagos go to the restaurant, eat. We might not even go to the restaurant to eat, but at least just explore Lagos, go to places, you know, hang out and see how everything goes. And he was like, okay, that's a very good idea. I said, okay. That was why, I think that was part of the reason I agreed to let him stay over at my place because I figured that, first of all, he's going to, if he stays in the hotel, he's going to pay money at the hotel. And the hotel that I saw, they said it's 10K last for their smallest room. But, when I now, you know, remember that we, we said we are going to go house to play Explore Lagos and everything, I, I just said, okay, let him stay at my place. At least he will be able to save whatever money that he was going to spend at the hotel. And then maybe we can use that whole money to go out. I was considerate. I was understanding and everything. So he came and I think he later in the night, and said, oh, I did not go to the market, so I could not go to the market. You know everything. But let me cook noodles so that we can eat. While I was cooking the noodles, my, my grounded pepper, I put the grounded pepper in a bottle. The grounded pepper, the bottle fell and broke. And because it's bottle, I did not want to pack the pepper because, you know, you might have like pieces of bottles in the pepper. I don't want to risk it. So I packed everything. I want to throw it away. 
I was just lamenting about the pepper, honestly, because it was paining me. And he, he kept telling me, don't worry about the pepper, we'll buy another one tomorrow. I said, okay. So he told me that he came, he, in fact, when he was coming that Wednesday, he did not come straight from home. He went to an interview because he's currently John Orton. He's working at UBA, but he's currently, you know, looking for other options and everything. So he said he went for an interview somewhere south should be. I can't even remember the place. But he went, he came from home and went to the interview. And by the time he got there, I think he, he, the interview was for two days. So that day he came was the first day. Then the second day was this, you know, the second day. So he went there and I think they have finished that day. So he came back and he was telling me, I said, okay, so you, tomorrow you go to the interview. He said, yes. I said, okay. You know your way around. He said, yes. Apparently his parents, his father lives in Oshodi. Uh, I think at some point I asked him, were you going to have your bath? He said, yes. He asked me, is there soap in the bathroom? I said, yes, there's soap. He said he needed toothpaste. I gave him toothpaste. He went to the bathroom, he bathed, he came back. And then we talked and then I was tired and everything because I, I really worked that Wednesday. So I retired to bed. I went to, I, sleep in, I slept in the room. He slept in my couch in the living room. Fast forward to the next day, being Thursday, I woke up with severe stomach ache. And when he asked, I told him that my stomach was spinning me. He was like, oh, do you want medicine? So I said, no, I, I just need to go back to sleep. If I wake up, I, I think I will feel better. He said, okay. So he, he, he bit and left for his interview. I went back to sleep and I, I think I woke up somewhere between two, three and i've not had breakfast or and there's no food in the house so i woke up and then i figured that i need to go to the market to you know maybe buy one or two things come home and cook and that it was exactly what i did i went to the market bought few things and came home to cook when i got back i saw that he was trying to call me that he had been calling me and i called him back and he was like he wanted to come home since but I, I was not picking. I said, sorry, I went to the market. But I'm home now, you can come back. So he came back. I finished cooking. I cooked rice and stew with turkey and chicken. And I served him and he ate. So something in me was like, something with me was off. I was like, first of all, this boy was coming yesterday. This boy did not buy anything, not even bread. Then... He went out today for an interview. He, passed, he, he went from my place to Yenakbaja, from Yenakbaja to Oshodi, from Oshodi to the place that he went to. He went, he threw a flow. And this boy did not bring anything to. He did not buy anything. I was just thinking about it. Plus, I know that if I leave him, he, he, he planned to stay to like Saturday or maybe Friday before he will leave. And Frankly speaking, I've seen enough. I've already seen him. So I know the I already know the cocoa. I've seen it all. And I know that from here on, no way. No way. So I even told my friend, I called my friend on the phone. I was like, You want you know that when this your friend is coming here, he did not go buy bread. On our bread, he did not bring. I, I mean, if me go, I'm going to visit somebody or I'm going home. I buy, at least I buy bread. So how do you come all the way from home Dota to Lagos to see your will-be, supposed will-be girlfriend and you came empty-handed? Plus, you slept in my house till the next morning and you went for an interview. And then you came back from the interview, you still did not thought it wise to buy something on the way. Plus, when you left in the morning, I was sick. My stomach was paining me. Yeah, and you know there was no food in the house because there was no food. I did not cook. There's no food in the fridge. There's no food anywhere. In fact, if he was a sensible person, if he was a very, if he was a sensible person, when he was leaving that morning, 
So go for that interview. Sure, you will drop something. Say, okay, take add to the money. Add to, or even say, okay, take 1K or 500. You know, it is not even, it is the thought that matters. He deliberately did not buy anything. Maybe he didn't think that it was necessary. Or stinginess wants to wound him. According to him, the plan was for him to stay for, he came on a Wednesday, he was going to stay to Saturday, which is four nights. So you are going somewhere to stay for four nights and you do not think that it was necessary to buy common bread on your way. Plus, this is not just any year. This is a, you are going to see a girl that you have been talking to on the phone for a while now, a girl you are hoping to start a relationship with. It didn't make sense to me. So, we started talking and then I was like, you are going home tomorrow, right? Which is Friday. You are going home tomorrow, right? And he was like, is that the plan? Was that the plan? I said, I don't care about plan. You have to go home tomorrow because first of all, I have to leave the house. I'm going to the market. I'm going to see my auntie, which is true. I was going to go to a uh, trade fair. I was also going to see my auntie. And from the look of it, I wanted to pass the night at my auntie's place. The purpose of him coming to my house before was for us to get to know each other on a deeper level to see if we vibe, if we connect. And I have seen that we do not vibe. And I have seen that we do not connect. Because it is not me that you will use shake. It's not, so far, they did not swear for me. They did not swear for me. Ah, no, God forbid, but it's not even about giving you millions or thousands of naira. It's just, it's really is the simplest things, the small, small thing that really counts. It's the little, little things that counts. So for him, I already knew the kind of person he was. He was uh, the president, the president, the general of Asia, the prime minister, of stingy men association is fat it's not even stingy men as association it's stingiest men association of the world not even only nigeria is their president is their guy is the alga pata pata of them all the next day we woke up i went to the kitchen i cooked another fresh rice and served him after he finished eating at a point he was watching tv then at a point he got up, went to the bathroom to bathe, and he got ready. I said, okay, me too, let me go and bath so that we can go together. Me, I went to the bathroom and bathed. He carried his bag. I carried my bag and entered Keke from my place to Yanakbaja. I think it was 200 naira or 300 naira. So he paid. He said he's going to Hore, from Hore. He will go to, he will take another bus to Umudotan. So he was going to Ore. I said, okay. He said he cannot go to, he cannot enter bus from Yanakbaja. To, he cannot enter the red bus from Yanakbaja. That he, he will take a bus to Bega. I said, why? He said, because it's cheaper. Ore from Bega to Ore. It's cheaper than if he entered in Yanakbaja. I said, how much is the difference? He said, it's a lot of money. I said it cannot be too much. By the time you calculate the money that you are going to use to get to from Yanakbaja to uh, Bega, then from Bega to or if you calculate it, the difference will not be that much. He was like, even if it's 50 Kobo, that is the difference. He will rather go and enter the cheaper one. <laughs> I said, what about the inconveniences that you will face? He said, no, there's no inconvenience though. She is just boss that you went there. What's inconvenience is there? There's no inconvenience at all. When we got to Yanakbaja, he said he wanted to withdraw money from Kes Bank, that he does not have any cash with him. I said, instead of going to Kes Bank, because Fes Bank is far. Look at Echo Bank here. Echo Bank was just right here we stopped. From came down from the Keke. Look at Echo Bank here. Why not withdraw at Echo Bank instead of going to walking the distance to get to Kes Bank? He was reluctant at first. Later, now I agreed. He now said, "Why we are going?" No, he now said uh, he wanted to go to First Bank to withdraw because he, he is using First Bank. He have First Bank ATM, and that they will not charge him for withdrawal. How much you, again do people do they charge you when you use your cards to withdraw in another bank? How much is the money again? So 
we I got into my bus that I was going to use to get to I was going to trade fair. So I got into the bus and then we left and uh, that was it. Did you know that that pepper that he told me that don't worry, we'll buy another one tomorrow. This boy never mentioned the pepper. If it was a reasonable person, she would ask me about the pepper. Did you buy the pepper? How much did you buy it? You know, blah, blah, blah. Something like that. I forgot the part where I told him that the long distance relationship was a problem for me because if he was staying in a place where I can easily fly to, take a plane and go, or he can take a plane and come to see me, it's a different ball game. Let's say he's, he was staying in Abuja or he's staying in Ibada, where I can just go to the airport, take a plane, and I'll go. It's a different ball game. Now he's staying in old town, one village or town. No disrespect. I've never been there, but he's staying in a town in Ondo states. Where yeah, if I have to go there, I'll have to take bus. Not one bus, not two bus, but three bus. Or how many bus to get there before I can go there. When I mentioned it and it was like, mm. it was mm. <laughs> I'm like, why did you do like, why did you sound like that? He said, no, nothing. <laughs> it's not as if I said, okay, supposing you're staying in a place I can easily fly to, you will not book fly for me to come. I'd not who make sure, I'd not talk anything about who is going to pay for the flight. I mean, if I wanted to go and see my man, for instance, and I have money, I can book my own flight to go and see my man. I only say that you don't stay in a place where I can fly to. You are staying in your own town. So every time I want to come and see you, I will take three bus or four bus to get there. It's a problem for me. And it was like, mm. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. that day, in fact, that day he, he told me he had gotten home. I wanted to tell him, you know what? I don't know how you feel when you came. I don't know what you, how you feel uh, after seeing me and everything. But I'll tell you how, how I feel. This ship is not going to sail. This ship is not meant to be. God forbid, bad thing. God forbid, bad thing. But then again, I now remember that paper that he said, don't worry, we will die tomorrow. And I asked him, you did not bother to ask me about that paper. He said, oh, he forgot. I said, did you forget or you deliberately did not ask because you were avoiding, you didn't want to pay for the paper. He said, no, he forgot. I said, why? It's not possible that you forgot. He said, he forgot. Okay. Uh, when I was now insisting that he did not forget, that he deliberately did not ask about the paper, he now said, how much is the paper? And I said, 3,000 naira. He now said, I should send him account number that he will send the money. I said, okay. I forwarded him my account number, hoping that I was going to get a lot in a matter of minutes. My people, guess what? This boy did not send the money that day that I sent him my account number. He did not send the money the next day. He did not send the money the day after that. He did not send, it took him like five days. And he, he later sent the money because I was, I kept asking him about the money. At first, when I asked him, you have not sent the money for the paper. He said, oh, he, he freezed this account because I told you you work as a customer care in UBA, in Ondota. And that he freezed the account when he was leaving office because he does not want to spend the money. So, and he has not resumed. He's still, he's still on, or he, he, he's still on off. And that he, I should not worry, he will tell his colleague in the office to help him unfreeze the account. I said, okay. So the colleague was supposed to unfreeze it the next day. So I was hoping that the next day I was going to get a lot. My bedroom, the next day, came and go. I did not see any alert. In the evening, I think around nine, and I asked him again. So what happened? Why did I not see the alert? He said the, the colleague did not unfreeze the account. Maybe the colleague forgot. And that he has not even been able to talk to the colleague. I said, eh? That I should not worry that he's going to resume office the next day. And once he resume office, he was going to send, he was going to unfreeze the account and send the money to me. And I said, okay, no problem. The next day, the money, I think around eight or thereabout. He now sent me the 3,000 naira. I told him, no, thank you very much for the money. I saw it. 
But it was okay account that they used to send me the money. So now let's assume I was telling him this. So let's assume that because you work at UPK as a customer care, you have the power to freeze and unfreeze your own account. How come you are not sending me the money via OP? Did you unfreeze your UBA account and then send the money from your UBA account to your OP account? Then from your OP account, you now sent it to me. It's obvious that you had this money the whole time. You did not want to send the money. And I said, anyways, you know what? You are a very unthoughtful person and you are a very stingy person. And it's not me and you. God forbid. And this boy was very angry. He was pissed. He was talking here and there. I said, eh. Well, I've said what I want to say. I have told him later on that, you know what? We can still be friends, you know, just be talking. But for the relationship, it will not work. But even as I'm talking to you now, that friendship will still not work. God will not make the friendship to work because God forbid that kind of friends. Eh? <laughs> God forbid that kind of friend. Just thinking about it. The guy used me. He did not come to Lagos just to see me. He came to Lagos for an interview. And then he needed somewhere to stay for free. And me now, being the understanding, <laughs> being the understanding girlfriend, girlfriend in court, I allowed him to come and sleep. I even gave him food on top, feed him on top. You will not be able to sleep until you submit all the rice and turkey you have eaten. If you are a young girl, you are single, you are searching, and you are looking for a man with good intentions with genuine intentions, please avoid today. Tunde that was at UBA Bank in Ondo Town currently. He does not have to like me or be in love with me to be able to do the little things like buy bread on his way when he was coming. Or say, okay, take one cake. I have to eat to, you know, cook. I'm going for an interview. Okay, take just 1,000. I have to eat and cook. By the time I come back, I will be hungry and I will eat. He does not have to like me to do any of these things. He does not have to like me to pay for the pepper that he used this man to say that he will pay. He was there. In fact, it was it, it was me that broke the pepper, but he, because of him that the pepper broke. It was because of him that the pepper the, the pepper jar broke. So, and he said it with his mouth. I did not force him. I did not even ask him. It was his own man that he used to say that he was going to pay for the pepper. He does not have to like me to pay 3,000 naira for pepper. It's just good to show that this is the kind of person that he is. If you are a young girl with good intentions, please don't go there. If you are even a young girl with bad intentions, don't go there. Because there is nothing, there is nothing good can come out of that Nazareth. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I am super, super tired. I don't even know what the time is. I've been speaking for a very long, 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 long time. I'll see you guys in the next vlog, in the next video.